Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to create a wind effect on tree leaves and also on grass. So first we will see how to do that on grass which is very simple in Unity. So I'm going to create a new terrain here. So a 3D object and I'm going to look for terrain. And I'm just going to create the most simple terrain possible. Here we go. And what I'm going to do is when you go into the terrain settings, you have a paint details setting. In here, you need to select a detail object. So edit details. And I'm gonna say add grass texture. In this case, you simply need a grass element, which is just a picture. So it can be a PNG or a JPEG file. So I would definitely recommend getting a PNG so you can have some transparency and only have uh, the basic grass. In my case, this is just a few lines drawn. Um, and if you're more interested into how to create such an asset, let me know in the comments and I will make a dedicated video on the topic. But you can definitely find some grass assets like PNG files uh, for free on the Unity Marketplace or just by Google search. Once you add your grass texture, you have a few settings here. You can define the width or the height. You can also define uh, the seed of the, the spawning of this, uh, of this new grass texture. And you can also choose the color. Right now, we're not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna click on add. And here we go. We have this grass detail. So I'm just gonna go back into my terrain. And I can start painting it. And the moment I start painting it, we can see the grass detail is being spawned here. And what I'm using is a stylized grass. So the moment I start hitting play, there is some wind automatically when using the terrain uh, generation in Unity. So this is that simple. You just need to add some detail into the paint detail option and select a grass image. You don't have to use a mesh. You can just simply use an image. And what you can do is in the settings of the terrain. So the very last button here, terrain settings. When you scroll down, you can see that you have a few settings regarding wind. So in this case, wind settings for grass. And from here, you can change the speed, the size, the bending, also the grass tint. So you already have all those options defined for you. This method only works if you're using the terrain in Unity. But if you are using a custom grass, then you can apply the second method, which will be for tree leaves. This will be the exact same method here. So I have this tree here. So I moved my camera and I'm just gonna hit play just to see what the tree looks like. So right now, this is the most boring tree. The leaves don't even look great right now, but we will fix that. And so this method, as I just mentioned, can be used for tree leaves, but also if you are using an actual mesh for uh, the grass and you don't uh, want to use the Unity terrain, for example. So what I'm gonna do is usually I would create a folder dedicated to shaders, but here this is an empty project where there is pretty much nothing. So I'm gonna create a new shader. So right click, create, in this case, I'm going to use the shader graph and not just shader. So shader graph, URP, lit shader graph. I'm going to name that leaves shader. And I'm just going to open that. So I'm going to minimize everything and focus on the shader graph itself. So what we want here is a grand total of four different parameters. We want a wind strength. So I want that to be a float. We just want to change one value, pretty much like the grass uh, in the terrain. We just need to change the strength of um, how wind the, the, how strong the wind is going to blow. So I'm going to name that wind strength. I also want a wind speed float. So create a new float. I'm going to call that wind speed. Then I would like to have a color to just change the color of the, 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 the leaves. So I'm gonna create a new color and simply name that color. Then I will create a vector to this time and not a float, which I will call wind direction. We're creating a vector to here because the direction goes in two ways. It's not just one value, there's actually two values. You know, one direction can be slightly stronger than the other one. Like the wind does not always blow like one direction. It can be two, like so for example, not just south, but can be like southeast. So in this case, you kind of want to have two values to mimic this uh, this wind movement. And finally, 
I'm gonna create in final variable called uh, so it's gonna be a texture 2d and I will call that leaf texture pretty much like the grass uh, asset we used before you need a picture of leaves so what I can suggest you is to create or find on the internet some images of leaves you have plenty of those existing around uh, where you have uh, transparency so in this case I have four different leaves drawn and what is black is actually transparent same for my grass from before uh, it's everything white is just the main color and black is actually transparency so this is what I will use but definitely encourage you to find some images you can just find like an image of one leaf if you want doesn't really matter just as long as you have something that um, is uh, a leaf so we're gonna start from the very beginning I'm gonna move away from on the left side from everything else that will be uh, the final output and what I'm gonna do is right click create a new node and I will look for position. In this case, I just want position and not screen position. And I'm gonna keep the space to world. So nothing to do here. Then I'm gonna right click and create a new node and I'm gonna look for split. What I'm gonna do is connect the output of the position, which is the only thing that you can connect directly into the split. So what we're doing is we have this output, which is a total of three values, which is the 3D position. And we are splitting that. As we can see here, this is splitting the, uh, this value, the output into three smaller values, RGB, which corresponds to the color. And what I want here is to create a node, vector two. So I'm creating a vector two. And since a vector two only has two arguments, I'm only gonna connect two um, two values from the split node. So I'm gonna connect the red here, and I'm also gonna connect the blue. So while we're doing that is once again, well, as I mentioned before, uh, we don't need to have three directions for the wind, we only need to have two. So in this case, this is the same logic here. We are applying the same logic. We have this position, which is 3D, but we only need two values. So in this case, we only need the actual R and B values. So we have this. And now what we're going to do is start using some of those values we created here. So I'm going to move the wind direction here directly into the shadow. And this is a vector 2. And what I'm going to do is create a new node. And what I want here is normalize. So just type normalize. It should be under math and advanced. What we're doing here is we are normalizing the value of the wind direction. So I'm just going to connect the output of wind direction into normalize directly. So once we have that, I'm gonna create a new node, multiply this time, so looking for multiply, and we're gonna connect the result of the normalization we just did into A. And for B, this is where we can define some value, and this is where we will use the speed. So what we're doing here is we are choosing the direction of the wind, we are normalizing that, and we're multiplying that by the speed. So the wind movement, uh, whatever direction it is, will be amplified by the speed of the wind. So you have the wind blowing, but sometimes the wind can blow stronger than other times. So this is what's happening here. So this is great, but that does not really transfer into actual real-time movement. Like we just have multiplications here, we just have values. So to have an actual movement in a game, uh, you can use here the time node so just look for time when you are creating a new node and simply here multiply uh, what i'm going to do is use the multiply node drag that to another multiply node so we're getting the result of this previous operation what direction the wind is blowing in at what strength we are multiplying that with time to make sure that every second this calculation is happening and simply from the time node just connect the time into uh, the second output B and I'm gonna oops I'm gonna move everything slightly more on the left everything is uh, very spaced out here so on the top we have the word position that we are defining we are getting a vector and we kind of want to have that together with the wind direction we're just not like talking about the word position on one hand and talking about the wind in the on the other hand what we want is to have that together we want to say like the wind is blowing in this direction this needs to happen directly uh, into the material. So to do that, we simply 
use an add material so create node uh, we'll create an add node so I'll just look for add this is part of the math category and this time this is basic math so just add and connect the result of the vector 2 from before into a and the result of multiply into b so what we're doing is we are putting all of that together we're telling the material that uh, at this world position we have some movement happening we have a wind movement this is happening uh, in two directions at uh, whatever strength we defined before and we put all of that together so the calculation can happen in real time what i like to do next is creating a node called simple noise this is just to add a bit of noise a bit of randomness into all of that so what i'm going to do is simply connect this output directly into the UV of the simple noise. And in here we can see that we have a scale. Scale can vary, we can change this value manually. But instead of changing that value manually, what we want here is to actually use the wind strength. So to add to all of that, to add to the speed of the wind and all that, we also add, want to add some strength, which in itself is kind of like speed, but just giving a new value makes it a bit more random, a bit more natural. So just connecting this right here. Okay, so once I have this simple noise, uh, we're almost done with the wind movement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the output of the noise, create a new node from there, and it's gonna be a multiply node once again. What I'm doing is I'm gonna multiply that by 0.1. Um, in this case, I want a very small value, definitely not more than one, which is just gonna add a bit more uh, dynamic movement to the wind. Um, it's not necessary to like have 0 0.1, you can play around this value, but it's good to have a small value to make it more natural and not too strong either. And once we have all of that, we are almost done really. Uh, I'm just gonna create a new node. I want to create an add node and I want to add results of all of that uh, in A. And I also want to create a node here which would be position again and put that directly into the B of uh, the add node. What are we doing? We're just transferring all of that into the word position. It means we're gonna connect this directly into the position here, but this is not really gonna work if I do that. So what I need is one last node here called transform. So in this case, this is under math vector and I'm looking for transform. And I'm gonna connect the output of what we just did directly into the transform. So the transform takes, uh, if you look at it, takes a vector three. And this is why we're using the word here. We are using the word position um, and we are putting all of what we did before, all those calculations before directly into the word position. So just connecting all of that directly into the transform is what needs to be happening. And finally, this output needs to go into the position. Can I just simply uh, use the add directly into the position? It's not really gonna work well because we need to have a transform value. We need to like put all of that into actual like 3D objects in a, in a world, in the game. And in this case, make sure this is not object to world, but world to object. All right. So now that this is done, this is exactly what we need for the wind movement. So right now this is definitely uh, boring because we don't really have a color. So I'm gonna go quickly into creating a new color here. So in this case, I'm gonna use the color that we used before. And I'm gonna use the texture that we used before, so the leaf texture. From the leaf texture, I'm gonna look for a sample texture 2D. And I'm gonna multiply those two together. So what I'm doing is I have my texture here. So if we look at it, this is here. I want to just add one color to that. Right now it's just white. I want it to be kind of green. So I'm gonna add a color to it. So just have to multiply this texture with a color. And if you remember correctly, I mentioned that I'm using a PNG image. So everything black here is actually transparent, but the shader does not really know that yet. For the shader, uh, it's not aware that transparency exists yet. So it's just gonna be black. So we're gonna have green leaves, but black around, which is gonna be extremely weird. So what we need to do here is the property of the graph. I'm just gonna go back here. Our material is lit. 
So what do we want here is we have a surface type of opaque or transparent. In this case, I'm gonna keep opaque, even though transparent would seem to be a good choice. But what we need to do is activate the alpha clipping option here. Once you do that, you have an alpha option and an alpha clip threshold option. We don't really have to worry about the alpha clipping, but you do need to worry about the alpha value. And while this, the result of the multiply will go into the color, we are defining the color. I want to get the alpha of my texture directly into the alpha of the shader. You don't have to, but make sure that this material is rendered on both faces. This will depend on what kind of leaf you're using, but usually rendering on both will give you a better effect. Um, if I just save here, you can see that right now our material is pink here, which is not really great. So what I can do is change the default values of the wind strength to 0.5, the wind spin to 0.5, the color will be a default of a very bright green, the wind direction will have a default value of 0.5, oops, 0.5 for X and 0.5 for Y. The moment I start attributing default values here, we can see that the shader looks uh, more normal, I would say. It's not just the default purple corner that just tells you you have some sort of material mistake, material error. And the default texture will just be uh, the leaf I have here. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this. So right now I'm just attributing default values, but the whole point of creating a shader is that uh, when you create some variables, some parameters in your shader, you can reuse that as many times as you want. So I'm gonna save my shader, right click on it at the very bottom on the project, um, project manager. And from there I'm gonna create, right click create and then material and I'm gonna call that leaves. So back into my game. Um, back to my scene. You can see that the material I just created uh, from the leaf shader is one. We can see it has all the default options we chose here. We can see that the preview looks good. And in my scene for my tree, I'm just gonna drag and drop my leaves. So right now in my scene, there is nothing happening. And I would have to go into game mode every time to see if uh, my shader is actually working. And if you encounter this problem, it's actually very simple to have a rendering directly into the scene for any kind of movement like that. Uh, on the very top, into the toggle skybox, fog and various other effects, you can click on the drop down and choose always refresh. And this will always refresh. So what it means is that if there's some wind movement, we will be able to see that. Right now there's nothing happening. So let's change some values here. Let's go into a wind direction of two a wind speed of, let's say two, and same for the uh, strength. And we can see there is a bit of movement here. In case this is not really clear enough for you, I'm just gonna say 20 for the strength. And here we go. So this is way too much, but we can see that there is some wind movement. If I go into, get, uh, if I go into play mode, I can see the wind movement is happening here. So if I change the wind movement, direction uh, let's say the wind speed is 22 okay this looks crazy for sure so you have to kind of play around see what you prefer small values of one usually tend to be good uh, for the wind direction it's two and zero here let's go for two for the speed and 1.1 here see this is a very light movement here but here we go so this is it for this video and I will see you in the next one.